Hi everyone, it's Tim here. So this video is coming a little bit later than I intended because uh, Kat and I both caught COVID over Christmas. So that's probably why I'm sounding a little bit different today. Um, but uh, with that in mind, um, let's talk about heat pump hot water cylinders. So I've been meaning to talk about this for a little while. Um, I've been going on about heat pump hot water cylinders for ages because we have an air to air uh, heat pump system. As you can tell, we've, uh, there's one of the units there that heats our uh, office here. Um, but that doesn't come with hot water. Um, and I actually ran through a, a number of uh, options for alternative ways of heating hot water uh, if you don't have, let's say, an air to water heat pump system, which will do that for you as part of the package. Uh, if you've got an air to air system, what are the other options available to you? Um, so I've done a video that you can uh, you can see if I, I put a link uh, to it just above the uh, the heat pump uh, unit there and uh, you can see what the sort of things that I, uh, I mentioned in that video. Um, but my top choice um, for our particular situation is a heat pump hot water cylinder. Uh, now this is probably not the, uh, the cheapest solution um, and a lot of you in my previous video asked me whether or not that would be worth um, you know, the actual investment in, uh, in getting a heat pump cylinder that's um, you know, several thousands of pounds whereas I could just carry on doing what I'm doing now, heating the hot water using an immersion heater um, in our current uh, unvented cylinder which would certainly be the cheapest way of doing things. But I would like to reduce our energy usage. Uh, and the best way of doing that is using a heat pump because heat pumps are the best way of heating anything really, you know, air or, uh, or water, uh, because they're just so efficient. You get usually three or four times as much heat out as the electricity that you put in. That's why they're, they're so good and so, uh, um, so fundamental to the, uh, the energy transition and all that. Um, but yeah, they are a bit expensive um, and some of you asked me why I would do that when I could carry on uh, as I am uh, in a cheaper way. Um, and my answer to that is, well, firstly, I want to do it. I would like to reduce our, our energy usage anyway. Um, but also, uh, we actually are getting a reasonable number of, um, of uh, people signing up to Octopus Energy using our referral code that I, I promote every now and again on, on the channel. Um, and thanks to, to all you lovely people who have been uh, using that code, um, we've gained a reasonable amount of credit with Octopus. And that's um, given us uh, a bit of extra cash to, uh, to spend. So we're going to use that money um, that we've gained from running the channel. And we're going to use that to, uh, to get this heat pump hot water cylinder. So uh, yeah, thank you very much, everyone. You're helping, you're helping us to upgrade our house. And um, we're going to obviously share that process with you um, as well, because, you know, Anything we do to improve the house in, in terms of energy efficiency or whatever we do, uh, I'd like to share it with you on the channel. So uh, I figure that's a reasonable use of that uh, of that funding. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for that. So there's one more thing I should mention briefly before we carry on, and that's the fact that if you have an air to water heat pump system or you're planning on getting one, you will not need a separate heat pump hot water cylinder. So if that's your plan, you don't need to watch the rest of this video. Uh, basically, um, if you have an air to water heat pump system, that will provide both your heating for your house and your hot water. So you will get a, a separate cylinder along with that heat pump system, and that will be heated by the heat pump that does both your radiators and your hot water. So you don't need a separate heat pump hot water cylinder. Uh, in terms of efficiency, um, both will give you about the same uh, conversion from uh, electricity into heat, so between three and 400%. Um, so if, if you're planning on just getting a heat pump hot water cylinder, uh, for example, if you've got an air to water, uh, sorry, an air to air heat pump system for your heating like we've got, and that doesn't do your hot water, then a heat pump hot water cylinder will do you just fine. Um, but with an air to water system, you don't need the separate cylinder with the heat pump attached to it because you've already got a heat pump outside your house. Uh, so without further ado, let me start talking about um, actual heat pump hot water cylinders, what they are, what they do, uh, why they're so good. Um, and then I'm going to compare a number of different options. Uh, there are a handful of, um, of cylinders that are available on the UK market now. I'm not going to talk about all of them. Um, I'm going to talk about four uh, that I know of. Um, there are a couple of others that um, viewers have let me know about. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll put links to um, all the websites of all of the hot water cylinders, the, the heat pump hot water cylinders that I know about in the description. So you can go and check them out for yourself and check out the, the specs. Um, but I'm going to compile a, um, all of the specs for those four hot water cylinders that, uh, that I'm going to talk about today into a convenient table for you at the end of the video so that you can see um, how they compare against each other. And uh, let's get on with it. So let's take a quick review of what a heat pump hot water cylinder is. It's basically a standard unvented cylinder um, with a heat pump on the top. It's as simple as that, really. Um, so this is the Valent Arrow Store, which is one of the four units that I'm going to be talking about today. Um, and this is a sort of cutaway um, 
diagram showing the uh, the inner workings. You've got the actual um, uh, unvented cylinder underneath, and then you've got the heat pump, which sits usually on the top. And the heat pump itself has got the standard things like the uh, the compressor and the um, uh, refrigerant uh, gas that uh, flows around the system goes through this heat exchanger, and then air gets drawn in through one of these two vents in the top. Um, it then uh, imparts some of the energy from the air into the uh, refrigerant gas which then gets compressed and uh, heated up and then that heated um, uh, refrigerant gas then uh, heats up the hot water which then gets piped into the cylinder itself to um, in through a series of coils which then heats the water inside the cylinder and then the uh, the cold air which uh, has been uh, exhausted of of its um, warmth then gets expelled back out of the other vent so you have an inlet va uh, vent and then an outlet vent basically so let's talk a little bit more about these vents that I mentioned uh, just now. This is the Valent Arrow Store data sheet um, and it actually has a nice convenient diagram that I can use to, to show you some of the configurations that you can set up your heat pump hot water cylinder, um, showing various ways that um, the inlet and the outlet vents can be set up. So for example, you could set it up so that the inlet um, vent takes air from your loft space. That gets drawn down into the heat pump. The um, heat exchanger does its thing. And then the cold air gets um, spat out uh, to the outside uh, world uh, through this uh, outlet pipe here. Um, alternatively, you can leave both vents um, uh, completely open as long as you've got ventilation so the air can come in, uh, get sucked in, uh, and then you know have the heat exchanger do its thing and then get spat out again and then the air can then circulate back out of the, of the room. Or uh, you can have a situation where um, air just gets drawn in through through uh, a vent into the room, gets sucked into the heat pump, and then the ex exhaust air gets spat out. Now, personally, I wouldn't go for any of these. I would actually have a situation, probably this one here, where but I would have um, a pipe actually connecting the the vent in the heat pump with the outside, so the air is drawn in from the outside, and then gets exhausted back out to the outside through a separate vent. Um, I think that personally is probably the best option. A lot of people say that um, this option here is the most efficient where you draw air in from the loft space um, because the loft tends to be warmer. Um, that's certainly true in the summer. I would argue, yes, I would agree with you. That's probably um, the best configuration uh, to go for. But in the winter, it's um, heat from your house that heats the loft space, not, you know, the sun's not going to be heating heating the roof. So what happens then is the um, uh, the heat pump will draw in the warm air from your loft, but then cold air will get drawn into the loft to replace that warm air that gets pulled into the heat pump. Now, of course, that then means that your house it then has to heat up the now colder air in your loft space, which means that you're losing heat from your house. So it's not, you don't get something for nothing in this configuration. You will lose extra heat from your house because the loft will be colder. It's as simple as that. So I don't know if that makes it better overall than having it vented from, you know, the, the inlet coming from outside and the exhaust going outside compared to this situation here. I would certainly never do this this configuration here um, where the, the air in the room is just circulated around because... Uh, unless you have a huge amount of, uh, of ventilation, I think that's going to be less efficient. Um, I I can see the argument for this this setup here, um, certainly in the summer, but I'm not sure that's the best option for the winter. So for me personally, I think what we're going to do is put our heat pump uh, cylinder in the garage, which means actually this configuration is the best option with a with you know two pipes both going to the outside world. Um, which means that it's not going to be drawing air from the garage. That's my personal uh, preference. Um, I think that will be the most efficient. Uh, there's other reasons for, for us putting the um, uh, the heat pump cylinder in the garage as well, and because the, the actual heat pump itself, the compressor and the fans that are involved, will make a, a bit of noise. And I'm going to go into that in a little bit more detail, but I think having the, um, the cylinder in the garage will mean that it's less audible uh, when it's running. So normally probably what we would do is run it overnight during the cheap, um, Octopus Go off-peak period um, so that we could run it uh, super cheap uh, and I don't want that to disturb anyone in the house if they're trying to sleep for example. Um, there are options for obviously you could put this in your airing cupboard but 
I think probably what you would want to do is add a little bit of soundproofing to the inside of your airing cupboard. You can get sort of soundproof boards that you can install. Um, that's a little bit more hassle, obviously. So yeah, my preference would be to put it in the garage, but we shall see. It may be that it turns out to be more convenient to put it in the uh, in the airing cupboard, in which case I will do some soundproofing um, uh, beforehand. Um, but yeah, that's my plan anyway. Uh, subject to change, obviously, depending on uh, on on uh, the practicalities of all of this. Um, but uh, that's that's what we're thinking of doing. So I should just clarify quickly that the uh, garage is an internal garage. It's part of the house. Um, so again, that gets uh, warmed up a little bit by by the rest of the house. And I don't really want to draw air directly from the garage itself into the heat pump. Um, so I would want to connect this uh, this inlet pipe uh, to the outside world through through a through a pipe rather than uh, drawing air from the garage itself, which would then need to be reheated by uh, by the rest of the house in the same way as I described. Uh, this situation here with the loft space. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that would be my preference to use uh, pipes for both inlet and outlet. Okay, so let me show you very quickly the four heat pump hot water cylinders that I'm going to compare today. Uh, this is the uh, the Valent Arrow Store, as I showed earlier, the uh, the cutaway diagram there, um, which was very convenient for me to show you what's going on inside. Um, this is the website. It's got a bunch of specs um, and all that other stuff. You can uh, plus this out to see a convenient table of the different uh, specs for the, the two models that they've got available. Um, we also have the uh, Dimplex Edel hot water cylinder, um, heat pump hot water cylinder. There are a couple of different models here, a 270 and a 200, but also a sort of slimline 170 litre version um, for those people who, have, um, uh, who need something a little skinnier um, but don't need quite so much hot water. We've also got the uh, the Daikin um, uh, Altherma uh, EKHHEU. Um, now this is a relatively new uh, model that's not been available in the UK until recently. It's um, uh, I've been made aware that this is coming to the UK market pretty soon, um, sometime in the new year, I think, if not already. Um, so this is something that um, uh, you can uh, look into if uh, Daikin is your preference. And another new one um, that's coming to the market in the new year is the Mixergy uh, Integrated Heat Pump uh, Hot Water Cylinder. Um, so these guys um, obviously are very famous for their um, existing sort of standard unvented cylinder, which um, uses um, proprietary technology uh, to uh, uh, ensure that you have you use less hot water in the first place, um, and they've integrated that into their um, heat pump version. Um, this is currently undergoing um, trials and will be should be commercially available um, sometime in the new year. Um, but uh, yeah, they've got a whole load of different um, um, sizes, and uh, they've got a, a very fancy website with uh, lots of information um, there. Um, so I'm going to put a link to all of these down in the description, and you can find the uh, the data sheets on their websites. Uh, the data sheets for all of these um, cylinders are very annoying. Uh, they're all formatted in very different ways, which may, makes comparing them um, really difficult. Uh, so what I thought I would do to help you guys out is to compile them all together and uh, into one uh, convenient table um, that I can show you uh, now. Okay, so here we are with the master table comparing all the specs of the four different heat pump cylinders that I'm talking about today. Uh, we have the uh, manufacturer at the top here. The model is the next line down. And then I've got all the important, um, what I consider the important specs uh, in the table here. Uh, there are there tend to be more specs than this on the individual data sheets. So if you want the full list, um, go uh, to the individual websites and, and find the data sheets yourself. Um, but uh, these are the ones that I think are, are probably most important and most relevant to most people. Um, so let's run through them real quick. Um, a lot of these have different sizes available, um, so you can see that the uh, the Valent has got 200 and 270 litres. The Dimplex has got the Slimline 170 litre that I showed you, um, along with the standard sort of 200 and 270 litre uh, variants. The Daikin has a 200 and a 260 uh, litre, whereas the Mixer G has got, um, I think, like seven different ones running from 90 all the way up to 250 litres. So you can really fine tune uh, depending on what your your usages are. Uh, the diameters tend to be pretty similar, roughly 60 centimeters in that sort of ballpark, um, except for the uh, the Dimplex Edel 170 liter one is, is uh, a bit slimmer at um, 52 centimeters uh, diameter, um, whereas, uh, and the mixture is very slightly slimmer at um, just under 60 centimeters, whereas the others are slightly over. The heights obviously depend uh, entirely on, on the capacity. Um, typically one and a half to two meters, something in that ballpark. The Mixergy um, largest capacity one 
um, is very tall, two meters, uh, ten centimeters. Um, but the obviously it's got the, uh, the smallest capacity of ninety liters is is quite short at uh, just over a meter. And they're all similar sort of weights, um, empty. So these are the empty weights, obviously, when, when they're not full of water. Uh, Mixed G tends to be a little bit heavier by the looks of it, um, as as is the Daikin actually. But uh, the Valent and the Dimplex, um, uh, pretty similar uh, weights. The, uh, the next one, the thermal loss, um, uh, this is what they call the standing heat loss uh, over 24 hours. So imagine you fill up your heat pump uh, cylinder to, um, to maximum capacity um, at uh, I think like 55 degrees, something along that, uh, in that ballpark. And you just let it sit there for the whole day without drawing any heat, uh, any water from it. How much energy would that lose? Um, and uh, in the case of the Valent, um, 200 litre, it would, it would lose 1.6 kilowatt hours so you would then need to top it up with 1.6 kilowatt hours of heat um, in order to, to top it back up again at the end of the day and uh, you can see the numbers for the other ones I think the Edel uh, 170 litre loses a little bit more because it's slimmer which means it's got a larger surface area relative to the volume which means it loses a bit more heat I think that's why that's a slightly higher value there Daikin didn't have a, a value that I could find I may have missed it somewhere um, uh, Please bear in mind that I may have made uh, transposition errors in any of these values, so please double check them yourself uh, and uh, let me know if I've got any of them wrong. Um, Mixergy, obviously the smallest cylinder has the, less, the, the least amount of volume, so it loses the least amount of uh, heat, um, um, and the largest one loses the most amount of heat, but you know the different sizes will, will be somewhere in this range. That's assuming um, the cylinder is absolutely full. The One of the main... Uh, Differences between Mixergy and the others is that the Mixergy cylinder can actually only uh, it can run at um, part filled. Uh, so uh, let me just show you very quickly, and uh, then then we'll come back to this table in a second. Uh, what I mean by that. So what do I mean when I say that the Mixergy system can only part fill with hot water if it needs to? Um, what I mean by that is that uh, typically a hot water cylinder will heat up with a coil at the bottom and that then uh, transfers heat to the, the cylinder which then completely fills up with hot water over time, um, the whole cylinder being roughly the same temperature. You then draw hot water off of the top and it gets refilled with cold water at the bottom. So what you tend to find is that uh, you, you have this um, stratification line where you have cold water below and then hot water above. And the more hot water you draw off, the more cold water gets pulled in at the bottom. But in order to reheat the cylinder, you have to do the whole thing all in one go. Whereas with the Mixergy system, that stratification line um, effectively gets pushed down from the top because the uh, their system heats the hot water from the top rather than from the bottom and then that pushes this stratification line down uh, as more hot water is, is added at the top. I don't know exactly how it works, I think it's pretty clever, um, but it means that if you only typically use half of a, a cylinder's worth of hot water a day, the Mixergy system will only fill up halfway, which means that this uh, stratification line will sit roughly halfway up the cylinder and you draw off you know, the hot water that you need off of the top. Um, and that means that there's less hot water sat there um, able to lose heat through this uh, this standing heat loss that, that I was talking about a minute ago. Um, and that's what uh, I mean when I say that uh, um, the Mixergy system doesn't necessarily have to completely fill up. So let's go back to the table and I'll explain why that's important. So the reason uh, that that's all very important is that if you've got less hot water in your cylinder then it will lose uh, less heat over the day if it's just sat there. So that's why Mixergy gives this additional piece of information called thermal loss at 25% and uh, they have that as 0.54 kilowatt hours. So what that means is if your cylinder is only a quarter full, it will only lose uh, 0.54 kilowatt hours instead of between one and 1.75. I'm not sure that, that uh, value is, uh, is completely accurate because I would have thought that a 90 liter cylinder at 25% full will lose less uh, energy than uh, a 250 litre cylinder at 25% full so I would expect this to be a range but they don't show a range uh, in in their data sheet they only show this one number for all all of the cylinders that they've got um, so I'm not sure what that means exactly but uh, regardless uh, if your cylinder has less hot water in it it will lose less heat it's as simple as that and that's why the mixed juice system is a little bit different to the others because um, if uh, if you typically use less than a full tank of hot water each day uh, the mixergy system will only heat up what's required 
and therefore your standing losses will be a little bit lower which means that it could potentially be a slightly more efficient uh, cylinder and that's why uh, Mixergy their standard cylinder works in the same way and that's why typically um, if you have a standard Mixergy cylinder you will find that it's a little bit more efficient than a than a standard unvented cylinder and that's that's sort of their their key selling point really um, so the other interesting uh, section uh, obviously is is the coefficient of uh, performance um, and uh, typically they're all quite similar between um, roughly just over three uh, slightly lower for the, uh, the the slimline edel 170 liter tank there um, but roughly let's say between three and 3.4 something like like that they're all much of a muchness looks like the mixer G is slightly uh, higher than the others but uh, uh, not significantly so that that would make much of a difference uh, the temperatures are all about the same um, it looks like that most of them can reach between 55 and 60 uh, degrees I wasn't sure what the Daikin could achieve it didn't seem to tell me that information again if you manage to find it let me know um, but uh, you can always use the the backup immersion heater that these all come with to boost the temperature above that um, anyway if you really wanted um, you know hotter water than 60 degrees I don't think anybody needs water that's hotter than 60 degrees if I'm honest um, if you're worried about Legionella don't be um, Legionella will die uh, anything above 50 degrees and if you've got your cylinder set uh, to like 51 52 53 degrees then uh, that will be absolutely fine um, and in addition to that you can always boost it uh, once a week or so uh, to 60 degrees if you really want to be absolutely sure uh, to wipe out any Legionella but um, generally speaking the cylinders will manage that themselves anyway um, but uh, but yeah um, you shouldn't uh, shouldn't worry about uh, Legionella with a heat pump cylinder because uh, they will uh, they will take care of that for you um, the refrigerant is an interesting one um, now uh, this might not be something that most people will worry about and uh, generally I think it's probably one of the least important things um, but for those of you who want uh, you know complete uh, um, complete uh, clarity on all of this stuff uh, the uh, the refrigerant is what um, does the uh, you know it's, it's what transfers energy from the uh, the air into the uh, into the water and uh, the refrigerant itself is a um, a greenhouse gas and if it ever got into the atmosphere it uh, they, they tend to be quite powerful greenhouse gases um, and they can uh, they can obviously cause warming in and of themselves so uh, you you want a, a refrigerant that's um, uh, that will have as minimal environmental impact as possible obviously if, if you can get away with it um, so the valent and the dimplex both have um, R290 uh, refrigerant which is basically I think it's propane um, uh, so it, it's what they call a natural refrigerant it's not um, not man-made uh, in the sense of it's not a, uh, not artificially created you can find it in nature uh, even though it's probably actually man-made in reality uh, from derived from petrochemicals or whatever um, but uh, the um, R290 refrigerant has a very low global warming potential is what they call it GWP um, so Per kilogram, uh, the global warming potential is three times higher than carbon dioxide. So a global warming potential of three means it's equivalent to uh, three kilograms of one kilogram of, of R290 is equivalent to three kilograms of carbon dioxide. Um, that's over a period of 100 years. The sort of the amount of warming it would contribute over 100 years is equivalent of three kilograms of, of, of uh, carbon dioxide. Um, the refrigerant charge is what's at the actual um, mass of uh, refrigerant in the system and for the valent and the dimplex it's only about 0.15 uh, kilograms which means the total global warming potential equivalent uh, in terms of kilograms of co2 is about 0.45 so that's pretty that's basically negligible so you shouldn't worry at all about uh, about that interestingly that both the daikin and the mixergy uh, systems have um, r134a refrigerant which is now I thought this was getting phased out. I think this is. I thought this was a, a an older refrigerant that is um, uh, that was getting um, phased out uh, and should be replaced by newer ones such as um, R290. Um, so I'm not really sure why why they they they've still got this um, this relatively old refrigerant. There may be a good reason for it. I don't know. Uh, if I find out, I will let you know. Um, but I was surprised to see that the refrigerant charge for the Daikin was a kilogram. Now I don't think that can't be right. Surely. Maybe, maybe it is, maybe it's not, but um, uh, in either case, I couldn't find that value for the Mixed G system, so uh, I don't know, I'm afraid. Uh, but the global warming potential for um, R134A is, is um, quite large, <laughs> shall we say, uh, 1,430 
multiples of um, of CO2 uh, compared to the three for the R290 refrigerant, which means that if the refrigerant in the Daikin or the mixture ever got into the atmosphere, it would contribute, you know, quite a substantial amount of um, of, of warming uh, in comparison to the the valent or the, or the Dimplex. So that's the, that's the main downside of the Daikin and the Mixergy ones, in my opinion. I don't know why they've gone for for this particular refrigerant. Uh, but having said that, these refrigerants should never be vented into the atmosphere. Uh, if the system is maintained properly, they, they, it, it should never leak. And at the end of life, these refrigerants should get um, recovered and disposed of appropriately. So realistically, this, this shouldn't really be a consideration. But if that's something that worries you, then just bear that in mind. Uh, so that's something to, something to think about. Uh, regarding noise level, so I mentioned earlier that um, all of these uh, heat pump cylinders are, are obviously have uh, a noise associated with them when they're running because they're effectively like, it's like having a noisy fridge on top of your uh, your cylinder. Uh, it's the same technology basically, it's a, it's a fridge uh, in reverse. So it has a compressor and a fan and it will uh, make a little bit of noise. Uh, measuring that it's extremely difficult for me to get a, a, a good comparison between these cylinders because they all measure it in a different way and that is extremely annoying uh, and I'm afraid I, I don't have a good answer for which one's the quietest because I don't know. It's as simple as that. Um, they, they measure it in three different ways. Sound power level which is sort of uh, is a sort of, it's supposed to be a standard way of measuring, uh, of measuring noise uh, generated by um, any equipment. You then have this thing called sound pressure level, which is a sort of more human-centric way of perceiving noise, I think. That's the way it works. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but sound pressure level uh, should be measured at one meter, but uh, the Dimplex uh, cylinders show it differently for the different models. So for the 170 liter model, they show it at, uh, at one meter, and for the other two cylinders, they show it at two meters, which makes compar comparing them uh, very difficult and, and uh, impossible basically well you, you can work it out but I'm not going to do that um, but they don't uh, you don't get the sound pressure level for the valent or the Daikin so they just provide the sound power level which is you know this value here the G one says it's the sound pressure level it doesn't say what distance it's at but it looks more to me like it's actually the sound power level because it's it's sort of in the 50 region as opposed to the 35 to 40 region, which is typically what you'd get with with heat pumps. They tend to be in the sort of you know 35 to 40 region for sound pressure level, but in the 50s for sound power level. Just from what I've been you know what I've found in uh, in 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 my research. So I don't know. Take all of these these values with a huge pinch of salt because uh, I honestly couldn't tell you what that means in in real terms. Um, Personally, I think that any one of these, you'd be absolutely fine if you put them in a garage, for example. Uh, but in an airing cupboard, I would be tempted to put some a little bit of soundproofing in, just to be sure, because I think that would be audible, particularly overnight if you're heating your cylinders using uh, cheap off-peak power, for example. Um, but as and when I find out, as and when I get my own heat pump cylinder, I will let you know uh, what the actual real world uh, sound level is um, rather than these sort of uh, rather arbitrary numbers here. So in terms of power consumption uh, they're all about the same uh, 700 800 watts. The Daikin one th this value was a bit strange to me it says uh, what was it the heat the heating equivalent uh, power which I but it didn't seem to make any sense to me because the amount of time it takes to heat the full cylinder is about the same as the others except it was a the power level is about half of the the other ones so I, that doesn't make sense to me so I'm not entirely sure that that's an accurate value they've all got backup immersion heaters of around about 1.2 to 2 kilowatts so usually that would only get used to boost the temperature above the sort of 55 60 degree maximum that you you would get from the heat pump itself but often you wouldn't need the, the immersion backup so you know maybe you, you don't need to worry about that but it's there just in case if you need a, a quick boost um, just to top up your hot water uh, obviously the, the maximum power is the, the com combination of the heat pump itself and the uh, the backup immersion heater and then this full reheat time you're talking hours basically for most of these 
um, because uh, this, although that's running, that's reheating from cold, so from uh, from about 15 degree hot, uh, cold water up to you know 55, 60 degrees will take you that long, you know, multiple hours. Uh, which uh, brings me on to the other main selling point of the Mixergy um, in that the the full uh, the full reheat time obviously is about the same as the others depending on um, on the size of the of the cylinder. Um, it's got a slightly more powerful heat pump, which um, which does reduce the uh, the time a little bit. But um, if you only wanted a quick boost of of, of hot water, if you just wanted um, to do the washing up, say in the evening, and you'd run out of hot water. It will only take half an hour to give you enough hot water to, um, you know, to give you uh, enough to to uh, get you through the rest of the day, say. And it would only take you half an hour because it can do this uh, this stratification thing that I was telling you about earlier, where it can heat the, the hot water from the top and then push that hot water, uh, you know, down through the uh, um, through the cylinder. So that's the those are the sort of two main um, selling points uh, for the uh, for the Mixergy um, in that you get uh, lower uh, heat loss um, if you're not using all of your hot water and if you need to boost it it can do it very quickly so that's that's pretty handy um, and finally this last line here is the warranty that you get with the with the cylinders typically um, they're around about five years the Daikin one again I couldn't find that that information please let me know if you find it I suspect it's going to be about five years as well because that seems to be standard um, these three the Valent the Dimplex and the Daikin the uh, the heat pump is built into the cylinder so that will be the warranty for the whole thing the mixergy cylinder on the other hand comes in two parts you have the cylinder itself for which the uh, warranty is 25 years and then the heat pump is separate and it is you know a completely separate unit uh, for which the warranty is five years as with the others um, so that's another good point actually about the the mixergy tank um, in is that uh, if the heat pump fails you don't need to replace the cylinder and if the cylinder fails you don't need to replace the heat pump whereas if anything fails on any of the other three you need to replace the whole lot so uh, so that's interesting I thought my preference is for the Mixergy system I've got to say because of those advantages because of this uh, this this split uh, between the, the cylinder and the, and the heat pump itself and the fact that you can boost the, 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 the hot water quickly if you need to so that would be that would be beneficial for us and it's also got multiple sizes, so we can have a good think about exactly what size we would want, and we could fine tune it. We could get, um, you know, something somewhere in the middle range, for example, probably 150, 170 liters, something like that would be, probably be fine for us. Maybe 200 liters. Um, we'll have a think about that, but that gives us options. Um, whereas the others, we've, there's only a handful of, uh, of different sizes. Um, if we uh, if we wanted something a bit more bespoke, then then the mixed G system. Uh, probably has something that would cover our needs. So there you go. I hope if you've been considering getting a heat pump hot water cylinder that this has been useful to you and given you something to think about. That's it for me. Uh, I'm going to head off now and have a sit down. I'm feeling pretty tired after all that. It's been a longer video than I was anticipating. But thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.